Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a couple fun games I'm going to share with you in this video. Both are where Leela begins without a knight. Now this first game is actually my first experience playing against Leela. And the second one is where Leela takes on 12-time Czech chess champion David Navarra, who's been as high rated as 2751 FIDE and is high ranked as 56th in the world. Now the reason I'm sharing this first game with you, uh, that my first experience against Leela, is in case you didn't get your laugh in for the day. Time controls are 5 plus 3, and I must admit, going into this game, I was feeling pretty confident. I actually played this one on stream on Twitch, and I thought to myself, all right, I have a game plan. I'm going to try and exchange pieces, keep things nice and simple, hopefully get the queens off, and just convert. Easier said than done. Now, right around here, I was feeling pretty confident once this bad for good bishop exchange was in there, and I now have this unassailable knight on e4. But, unfortunately for me, there's this dynamic in the position. This one here, unbalanced king state, opposite sides castles. This is something to avoid, so even though my experience playing against Leela, my score against Leela is terrible. Uh, some things I know to avoid, <laughs> or at least I am trying to avoid when I play Leela, Leela, are opposite sides castles positions, and also ones where Leela is able to establish pawns on your side of the board. Uh, what I'm trying to do here by the way, is make a mad dash towards the queen side, but Leela is not going to give me the time to do that. I felt that if I took it on this square here, the queen's going to have access to g6, so I ended up playing g5, and now my center's being undermined. I'm trying to maneuver if I have a couple more tempi. I'm going to try and get the knight here, here, but Leela says, I'm not giving you time for that. Uh, and at this stage, I felt compelled to give the material back. I played c6 here thinking if I take on c4, there's queen c6, targeting the knight, sweeping into e6. All right, I played c6, now I'm not even up any material, and in just a few moves, we see an unfortunate situation for Team Black. Check this one out. <laughs> now, once I was in this position here, I thought to myself, well, I started thinking about Alpha Zero versus Stockfish games, where... Alpha Zero would time and time again find a way to embarrass an enemy piece. Well, it really doesn't get much more embarrassing for this dark square bishop. <laughs> it's a tall pawn, or really an entombed tall pawn. I mean, how am I getting out with these three pawns here? I have three moves for the rest of the game. A completely busted position for me. And in this position, I ended up losing on time if I take the bishop. I'm getting mated. Completely lost position. If the game did continue, uh, if let's say rook captures here, white's going to have this passed pawn to work with. Check, 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 push, etc. Or if I try to exchange rooks, now I have to go into babysitter mode. Stopping mate in one. How do I get my king out? How do I get my bishop out? I can't move a single pawn. I'm completely tied down. Game over. Easy path forward for Team White. So that was <laughs> my first experience playing against Leela. Let's check out a game now where Leela takes on David Navarre. So as a start here, Leela doesn't have a king knight against real David Navarra on Lee Chess. There are a few other bot accounts if you're interested in trying your hand at these. Uh, Leela Queen Odds, Leela Rook Odds, Leela Queen for Knight. But uh, of the uh, handful here, to be sure, it's Leela Knight Odds that's going to give you the toughest time. So we have some Jobava London without a King Knight here. And one of the things that is really impressive about this game is that we get to move 10 uh, without the queens. In fact, uh, Grandmaster Matt, Matthew Sadler was providing commentary on this game. And David Navarra played against Leela in a 10 game match. Navarra 
ended up winning the overall match, 7-3. to three. Uh, But this game here, once we saw this position, I did catch some of the match live. When Matthew Sadler saw queen takes d4, he said something like, oh no, what is this? You're, you know, you're swapping queens. You're playing against, you know, you have this 12-time Czech chess champion, 10 moves in, you know, no queens on board. Should be an easy win, right? Well, it's not easy. And here's the here's a reason why. Uh, I can confirm, I've had my own experience with this, Leela is a killer with these bishops. So let's see how Leela works with the bishops in this game. First, goes to a3. And I believe now before the bishop can be tracked down with knight b5, it pivots there and is able to sneak around and provide some defense. It definitely needs to hang on to both bishops to have any real winning chances. And notice in this game, uh, the control white maintains over both of black knight, uh, both of black's knights. Uh, G4 is a, a move that is always just a blink away from rattling this knight post. Its post on f6 is always in question. So we have babysitter mode on the queen side, defending the b pawn, and eventually kicking the knight back. But again, this p position right here, every forward knight move is covered. How to make progress. Let's see. Black is in a pin here. Not the most comfortable position right now. Right around the corner, there's even c5 in this position. Uh, something you have to watch out for if black tries in this position to, let's say, pin the pawn, this guy could still move. Bishop takes bishop. You could insert the in-between move, landing a fork with check. Okay. Bishop a6, not a good idea. Rook c6 played. Rook a3. Rook a2. White's gearing up for an eventual c5 or maybe d5. Both are possible. Bishop e5. And now in comes this pawn play. No pawn established yet on black side of the board. But notice black is up a minor piece, right? But how good is this knight on e8? Okay. Not really a contributor just yet. David's trying to get that piece working. But now comes this pawn play. This is where it gets really dangerous now. I mean, if black tries instead of knight a6 to exchange pawns, now there's a quick path and we could start to see a rook on the seventh rank. And these guys might look especially clumsy. Just staring at the c4 pawn. So white is in a spot to quickly transfer a rook to the other wing in the event of a capture on g5. In comes knight a6. And now we have d5 time um, is not really on David's side at this stage for this 3-2 game. In comes d5. We have the capture and a check. King here and the doubling of the rooks. So this is where it now goes south for black. He isn't able to sort things out in this time situation. Exchanges rooks considered best is the bishop exchange apparently. He takes with the knight. And now we have this super invasive pawn. The bishops remain in this position. And now white is simply getting the material back, targeting the rook and the knight. And the finish is a very, very pretty finish with the bishops. Watch how they work. It's absolutely impeccable, this bishop play. White's now the one who's winning material. There goes the knight. And check out this conversion. The king is sealed off in the corner. And the plan here, get the king to this square. And we're going to see a sacrifice of a bishop soon enough. Notice in this, with this technique in the endgame, the dark square bishop, how it's able to conveniently control both of these pawns by maintaining pressure on the lead pawn. Whenever it moves, a gap is opened up. And then you control both pawn advances. So 
There we have bishop a3 and the king getting all the way to f8 for what, what reason? Well, follow up bishop b2 and bishop takes f6. It's at this stage. Black now resigns. Black is completely tied up. The bishop was doing everything, restricting the pawns, winding up a sacrifice, and there's no uh, defense here. If you take the bishop, it's going to be a check, another check, and a mate. And some other sequence, let's say bishop takes here, it's still going to lead to mate with the two bishops in the end. Bishop takes and bishop g8, mate. A beautiful final position. Leela is deadly with the bishop pair. Uh, feel free to share what you thought of these two games, and let me know in the comments if you've uh, maybe tried your hand at any of these bot accounts, these odds accounts, and let me know how you did, and uh, if you've had any success, especially against this Leela night odds. Anyhow, that's all for now. Take care.